Uh, welcome everybody, uh, good afternoon and thank you Henning for this introduction and uh, I'm proud to begin this uh, series of webinars on Glass We Trust and the topic of the today's webinar is optical fiber coupling to photonic chips and uh, I will show you what is the challenge in it and uh, to begin with I will present the uh, some theoretical basics of uh, coupling efficiency. I will introduce the quantity of mode field diameter and uh, at the end I will show uh, experimental methods uh, how to measure the mode field diameter and experimental methods how to efficiently couple fi optical fiber chips into um, optical photonic chips. And I will restrict myself to um, uh, but coupling like in this picture in the background. But first uh, let us um, begin with an overview, uh, with a historical overview, how the integration density of electro-optical systems evolved over time. Um, so in the 19th century and in the um, in, throughout the most of the 20th century, the electro-optical systems have been built on uh, um, optical benches. They, were, they are uh, large and heavy, but they are very stable. And actually, they are still very useful if you want to build um, a demonstrator uh, or a prototype. And I have here such a demonstrator, just to show you what is an optical bench. And this is a Machzender interferometer, well known from, from the school, from the, um, from the physics laboratories. And you, you see that it's uh, quite large. And in the last decades or years, uh, also in our groups at Fraunhofer IZM, we made some progress in miniaturizing such electro-optical systems. And um, we do it by um, integrating uh, electro-optical systems into uh, micro benches on glass. And I have also here a demonstrator. This is also a Machzender uh, interferometer integrated onto an optical micro bench. And you see how much smaller it is compared to the uh, large optical bench. But the future of micro integration belongs to optical chips. It's, well, this is a silicium photonic chip which also um, contains a Machzender interferometer. And the phase difference of the, between the arms of this uh, interferometer is controlled electrically and it can be used to switch the, the output of the chip on and off and with a rate of up to 40 billion times per second. This is, uh, ob the application is obviously the telecommunication. And uh, since these chips are so tiny, um, there's a challenge to electrically and optically interconnect them to surrounding devices and optical interconnections will be the topic of uh, my talk today. So first, let's have a look at the physical dimension of the problem. So optical, here we, we see a cross-section of uh, optical um, fiber and of uh, waveguide, on, waveguide on a chip. The fiber is 120 micrometer uh, in diameter and the light is guided in a 10 micrometer with a thin core and uh, however the wave, uh, waveguide on silicium chip is only 400 nanometer wide and we want to couple one to another and um, to be consistent let me draw the waveguide on a chip uh, in a proper scale this is how small it is so we, there is a large dimensional mismatch between the optical fiber and the chip integrated waveguides and the questions that arise are what is the coupling effic efficiency in case of edge bud coupling? What does it depend on and how can, we, can it be optimized? And to answer these questions, 
uh, we need a little bit of mathematics and uh, let's uh, begin with uh, uh, light uh, with the uh, light distribution in inside of these waveguides. So suppose that the light is propagation in a z direction, which is perpendicular to the screens, to, to your screens. And um, uh, suppose that we know the field distribution uh, of both the fiber and the waveguide in the x y plane. It is e1 and e2 uh, of x and y. And then the coupling efficiency is given by this mode field overall overlap integral. It looks ugly, but let's have a look what is, uh, uh, what is it composed of. Uh, so in the uh, denominator, we have just a product of, inten of light intensities, uh, and this is the normalization factor. And in the numerator up there, there's an overlap integral of the electric fields and this gives us an idea of uh, how good the fields are overlapped. Now let's uh, look uh, at some properties of the overlap integral. Um, first, um, the overlap integral regards the electric fields and not the intensities. This means that the mode matching Coupling efficiency depends not only on the intensity distributions, but also on the optical phase. So in case when the phase profile is not completely flat, and this is the case when we don't have the butt coupling, but some offset, then uh, the, op the efficiency will be um, um, affected by this not flat phase profile. Uh, how to uh, solve this integral? Uh, so if we have a, a good computer or a good student, this integral can be solved numerically and it can be solved numerically for any field distributions. But to make life easier, there are analytic solutions for some special cases and this special case is, for instance, a Gaussian field profile. So let's look at Gaussian field profiles. Let's assume that the E1 and E2 are both Gaussians. They are characterized by uh, mode field diameters. Here it is a, a general case of elliptic field profiles. And so we have uh, mode field diameters in X and uh, Y directions. And um, actually this assumption that the filters are Gaussian is a very good approximation for the ground modes of uh, most of the single mode wave uh, single mode waveguides and then uh, for for the Gaussian fields the mode field integral is uh, analytically solvable and the result is that the eta the coupling efficiency depends on the a transverse offset on the longitudinal offset between the coupling partners and on the mode field diameters. So the simplest case is, is uh, the bad coupling without any offsets. Uh, so we have delta x, delta y, delta z equal to zero. And then the eta zero, this um, coupling efficiency, uh, depends on only on the mode field diameters one and two. And you can easily verify that if you uh, set um, MFD1 equal to MFD2, the eta zero will be one. Now, if we have an offset delta x, then eta zero will be corrected by an exponential factor e to the minus delta x square. And if you are uh, interested in further cases, uh, uh, including the longitudinal offset and also a tilt angle between the waveguides. Uh, I um, refer to this, uh, mm, to this uh, paper. But now let's go back to the, um, to the transverse offset. And this, is, this transverse offset uh, gives us also a basic for the first measurement, me measurement method. So we couple the peak with the source fiber, uh, we detect with the detection fiber, and um, we have a perfect coupling, path coupling, so delta x, delta y, delta z is equal to zero. And now we begin to scan the source fiber 
in the x y plane and we record the um, intensity profile with the detecting fiber um, so we have this uh, um, intensity profile which is actually measured eta and now if the mode field diameter of the source fiber is known and we measured eta then from the formula that I shown in the last slide we can uh, determine the unknown mode field diameter of the uh, waveguide on the chip. This is a uh, actually quite a complicated method and quite advanced but it is a very practical since uh, the measured eta is in the same times your uh, uh, tolerance curve tolerance it gives you an idea of how tolerant is your systems for misalignments that can occur during uh, assembly process for instance and here you see an uh, example of such uh, coupling curves and you can recognize that uh, uh, just as one micrometer of, mis micrometer of uh, misalignment is enough to drop the coupling efficiency by 20%. So next method is uh, if we don't know the mode field diameter of the fiber, of the source fiber or, or both, uh, of the fiber and then on the of the peak, uh, we must to determine it with some other method. And one of these methods is uh, a far field angular angular scan method, and it is also implemented at Fraunhofer IZM. The method basi is basing on the angular scan of the intensity profile far away from the chip. So we measure the intensity as a function of uh, the angle theta. You can do it in, in both direction. Here you see an example of such a measurement. And once you have the E of theta, you can calculate the mode field diameter by using this uh, known uh, Peterman 2 integral. And this method is uh, actually very um, popular in fiber uh, community. It was in, invented for the fiber industry and it is recommended by the Telecom Industry Association. And this is described by an industrial norm uh, named here. But since it was uh, developed for the fibers, it works only for uh, cylindrical symmetric field distributions. And now we know both mode field diameters of the fiber and the core and the question is what is the coupling efficiency in this particular case and it is no surprise that it is uh, very small it is actually less than one percent so we need to think now of how can we increase it so the first step to increase the um, the mode field diameter of the waveguide on the chip uh, happens uh, on the chip itself. So there are uh, chip structures called uh, inverse tapers and this inverse taper expands uh, the, the beam up to five to six micrometers and with this uh, and it uh, expands such that the face front of the expanded beam is uh, perfectly flat on the chip facet. And with this, the coupling efficiency can be increased up to 50%. And we then have to bridge the residual 50% with some methods outside of the chip. So if you think of um, changing the beam size, you usually take lenses. And because we have here um, tiny fiber and tiny waveguides, on the chip, we don't. We are very limited in space, so we need to necessarily take micro lenses. So the um, advantage of taking lenses to change the beam size is that first, um, with lenses, with a system of two lenses, you can uh, create a, 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 a short section of a collimated beam, and in this collimated beam, you can place a uh, other optical element like a filter or like optical isolator and this is necessary for some applications 
Another advantage of lens is the of micro lenses is their scalability. Micro lenses are available as lens arrays, and uh, which means that with a with a single uh, adjustment step you can couple a parallel multitude of parallel waveguides into parallel pitch of waveguides on a chip. But the drawback is that this alignment process is uh, quite sophisticated. Now, the second method uh, is to modify the uh, facet of the fiber. And the facet of the fiber can be modified in such a way that the fiber itself is a lens. These are so-called lens fibers. This lens fiber can focus the light to a spot size, spot size down to 2 to 6 micrometers and the working distance, the distance between the um, fiber, fiber facet and the focus is typically 5 to 20 micrometers. So these fibers uh, cannot be bad coupled to the chip but they have to work uh, with, uh, with a gap and this is air gap because the fiber is a lens and it is optimized to work in a surrounding with um, um, a refraction index um, which is usually different than that of the, the refraction index of uh, glass. So you cannot fill the space between the fiber and the uh, chip with uh, adhesive to fix the fiber. So in order to fix the fiber, we uh, in our group we developed some special holders. These holders are um, made of uh, glass and um, with these holders you can uh, hold the fiber, you can adjust it before the coupling and finally to fix it. So um, these uh, lens fibers are, are available as uh, polarization maintaining fibers. So, which is important in some applications. Now, uh, next point is um, um, modified fibers, ultra high and A fibers. Uh, these uh, fibers have a very thin core, um, thinner than a standard that the, the standard fiber does have, and um, other, in other words, they have a high numerical aperture. That's why they are called uh, ultra high NA fibers. And uh, the mode field diameter of this fiber is between 3 and 5 micrometers, which fits very good uh, to the silicium photonic chips. But these fibers are quite expensive, so you don't want to use kilometers of them to, um, uh, to send the data. Uh, however, uh, there is it's enough that uh, a short piece of this fiber as short as one centimeter is enough to adiabatically convert the, um, the mode field from a standard fiber to the one fitting to the chip. And uh, connection between the standard fiber and uh, ultra high NA fiber is done uh, with, in a special um, process of fusion splice and the splice loss in this process is as low as 0.1 dB, which is acceptable for most of applications. These fibers are also available as single mode fibers, uh, as single mode fiber arrays. However, they are not polarization maintaining, and um, this is missing. So, and uh, we at uh, Fraunhofer Eizetheim we constructed a uh, custom array of polarization, maintaining and ultra-high NA uh, fibers. So we spliced a short piece of uh, ultra-high NA fiber to the polarization maintaining fiber and finally we built an array out of it. And the last possibility that I present is to uh, use some external um, chip, spot size converter chip. These chips uh, contain waveguides and these waveguides are tapered, which means that on the entrance facet they are matching the mode profile of uh, a single mode fiber, of a standard fiber, and they are adiabatically converting the, um, the beam profile down to 3 to 4 micrometers, which are matching the um, mode profile of the chip. 
And uh, these uh, chips can be used both as, as spot size converters and as uh, pitch converters. You can begin with a broad pitch and you can adiabatically narrow the distance between the waveguides. And uh, these, are, these uh, kind of spot size converters uh, are available commercially and uh, we uh, used these uh, waveguides to coupling uh, this to, to couplings to photonic chips and uh, we first attached a standard fiber array to this pot size converter and finally this assembly was held in, uh, in a special glass holder and altogether was attached to a silicon chip. So to summarize uh, we learned that a transverse offset method uh, delivers information about the mode profile on the chip facet and uh, if the mode profile of the probe fiber is known. If this is not the case, um, we need to use uh, other methods like for instance far field angular scan method, um, but this method can be used only for cylindrically symmetric beam profiles. And finally, if we, if we know the mode field diameters of the fiber and on the chip, then we can uh, use uh, diverse methods to uh, match them together. So, and the methods are um, internal, chip internal or uh, external spot size converting structures. Uh, this can be also micro lenses or modified fibers. So finally, um, I make a loop and uh, I go to the title of this webinar series, In Glass We Trust. And I would like to advertise the future webinars, uh, which will uh, give you a more detailed overview of how we use glass for photonic packaging. Some examples you saw already on uh, in this webinar, like I showed you some tiny uh, glass holders, but I would like to announce already now the future webinar, uh, which will show you details of photonic assembly with and on glass. And uh, the second important topic is uh, glass integrated waveguides. I was focused on um, waveguides in silicium, but we in our group are integrating waveguides into glass. And I have here a piece of glass, which looks probably transparent, but you have to believe me that there are waveguides on this glass, which means that we can build uh, photonic chips out of glass. And this photo uh, these uh, waveguides together with some electric functionality they are a basic of the so-called electro-optic circuit boards and also we um, are happy to present it to you in more details in one of the future webinars. So stay with, with us in contact. We are happy to, um, to have you as an audience of our future webinars. I am happy to hear questions now in the live discussion or you can send me or to Henning Schroeder an email in any time after the webinar. Thank you.